Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Playtech TV. My name is Kevin and today we're going to be checking out the Asus Strix GTX 960, NVIDIA's latest GPU. So they're saying this is supposed to be that perfect sweet spot for 1080p gaming in terms of uh, price to performance. So we're going to be testing this out and see how it does. So let's get into it. Let's start out then with the GPU itself and it's featuring the GM206 Maxwell GPU. So that has 1,024 CUDA cores running at a base clock speed of 1,253 MHz but will boost all the way up to 1,317 megahertz on this particular model, the Strix. However, with uh, GPU Boost 2.0, which this has, that will uh, change a bit. It'll go higher if temperatures allow, which we'll talk about a bit more later. Now, it features two gigabytes of DDR5 memory on a 128-bit memory bus, and that's at 7,200 megahertz on this particular model. So that might sound a little bit disappointing, um, but we'll talk about how the memory works. Just maybe like how uh, when you guys all first heard about the 970 980 being on 256-bit memory buses, you might have been a bit disappointed as well. But the way the uh, NVIDIA's memory works, it's not really a downgrade. Now it has a 120 watt TDP, which is really good. I mean, that just shows the efficiency of these uh, Maxwell GPUs. So that's uh, also really good for people that are running uh, lower power supplies, like 450 watt ones and stuff like that. It'll be also good for you guys. You don't need to upgrade your power supply. Now, some of the features is it has its third generation Delta color compression. So basically, that's like what we were just talking about with the video memory. It's an improved memory compression and caching, and that's to make up for its little 128-bit uh, memory bus. Now, it has MFAA, which is basically a much more efficient version of MSAA. Um, it stands for multi-frame anti-aliasing, and it doesn't take as much GPU power also, so that's another good thing. It has VXGI illumination technique, which is probably a little bit uh, beyond this 960, which is basically a better lighting technique. And uh, this particular model has the Strix cooler on it, which you might see is it's really quite small. So it has 75 millimeter fans. Uh, these are more standard looking ones, not the um, hybrid fans like you saw on the Direct CU2. Essentially, this is the same cooler though. It has uh, four heat pipes going to an aluminum heat sink. It has a nice back plate, which I always like to see. And as I said, every card these days should be coming with a back plate. It's just something they all should have. It, it makes it look that much better. It gives the card better rigidity. And overall, it's just something they all should be coming with. It has their five phase super alloy power, which means uh, higher overclocking, longer lifespans, and less coil wind. That's all in theory, remember? Their zero decibel fan technology, which means these fans aren't going to be spinning when the GPU is below a certain temperature, so when you're doing uh, more basic things like browsing web, watching YouTube videos, um, all that kind of stuff, the fans aren't going to be on at all, so essentially there should be no noise coming from it at all. But when you start playing more heavy games uh, and the GPU load goes up and the temperatures go up, then the fans will come on. Now as far as I.O. goes, it has the standard for NVIDIA, so triple display port, single HDMI 2.0 port, which means 4K at 60 hertz and a single DVI-I connection. So that's all pretty good, pretty standard. As far as power connectors go, it takes a single six pin power connector. So that's really nice, also showing the power efficiency. And you can use this in two way SLI, only has the single SLI finger. So with all of that out of the way, let's jump into the benchmarks and let's compare it to its predecessor, the GTX 760. The one we're using for this is the Gigabyte Windforce GTX 760. So before we start, uh, the highest boost clock I saw out of the Strix with GPU Boost 2.0, I remember on, on the box it says it'll go to 317 megahertz, or 1317 megahertz, but it actually went all the way up to 1366 megahertz, so a little bit higher. And the uh, 760 was going all the way up to 1241 megahertz. So the first test we did was Tomb Raider. So this is everything maxed out 1080p without VSync. The 960 scored 59.7 frames a second average, so just shy of 60 frames. The Windforce 760 in the same benchmark scored 51.7 frames a second. 
So yeah, almost 10 better for the 960 there. And now Bioshock, this is on user setting 2, 1080p. The Asus Strix GDX960 scored 76.5 frames per second average. And the GTX 760 Windforce scored 73.4 frames per second average. So only three frames better there for the 960, so a lot closer than I thought it would be. Now to a new game, well, newish game, uh, Shadow of Mordor. This is on the Ultra preset, 1080p. The GTX 960 Strix scored an average of 48.6 frames per second. The Windforce GDX 760 scored an average of 37.6 frames per second average. So that one was a bit better, uh, more than 10 frames better on the 960, kind of the improvement we look for. And that's basically generally what you'll see when testing the 960, is that it scores about, you know, give or take one or two frames, about 10 uh, FPS better uh, than the 760. So that's really good to see. Now, as far as temperatures go, it was just fantastic. So during the Unigen Valley benchmark that I did, the highest temperature I saw out of the Strix 960 was 60 degrees Celsius, and that was at a fan speed of 46%. By comparison, in Unigen Valley, the highest I saw out of the GTX 760 was 72 degrees Celsius, and that was at 58% fan speed, so higher fan speed and higher temperatures, although they were on different coolers. Now to noise, and both of these cars were incredibly quiet at idle, so there's no point showing you guys what they sound like, they're just completely silent. The uh, Strix 960, the fans aren't even spinning, so it's always going to be very quiet. But I took the noise when it was on load during the Unigen Valley benchmark. So, this is what the Strix 960 sounds like during that benchmark. And this is what the Windforce GDX 760 sounds like during the exact, exact same benchmark. So a little bit of difference there, um, obviously a bit better for the 960 as the fan speeds were lower and it should be expected given that Maxwell is, uh, well Maxwell GPUs are very efficient, very thermally efficient also and what that also means with these lower temperatures and lower fan speeds is that it gives you more thermal headroom when it comes to overclocking as well, something that these 960s I hear already are really really good at, you know people getting well over 1500 megahertz on the GPUs on them so these things overclock like crazy. So that leads us to the conclusion now and the 960 definitely is a good step up over the 760. It's more thermally efficient, it's more power efficient, it performs about on average about 10 frames a second better than the 760 and overall it's just a much better more advanced card coming in at a really nice price point. How it compares to other GPUs for sale in the same price bracket is up to you guys, the consumers, to decide. But overall, it is a good improvement over the GTX 760. Now, thank you guys for watching this video. Please subscribe to Playtech TV if you haven't already. And I'll see you all next time.